PDD situation is everything wrong with Hollywood. The PDD scandal has finally uncovered just how dark and twisted those in control of our culture I have no idea what it's really are. From, from some of the PDD most disturbing system. parties ever recorded, really are. From some of the most disturbing uh, what? parties ever recorded, sleepovers with a teenage Justin Bieber, funding and controlling your favorite celebrities, hosting his own love island where he took people off the radar. I got an island, it's called Love Island. <laughs> Are you going off the- uh, Epstein Island? with me, you gotta go to sleep for a week. Freak off parties, whilst also allegedly taking down some of the most iconic musicians in the industry. The P. Diddy situation is truly disturbing, and now that he's in custody, only time will tell what's gonna happen next. But the fact that this has been going on secretly- oh, so he called Actually, behind the closed doors of the Hollywood elite for decades shows just how well covered this truly was. But now, finally, the truth is unraveling in front of our very eyes. P. Diddy needs hardly any introduction. Before he was infamous for his crimes, he was at the top of society. He rubbed shoulders with some of the most powerful celebrities in the world. He knew everyone in the music industry, from Jay-Z beyond. Weinstein, Beyonce, Snoop Dogg, to Biggie Smalls, and even Justin Bieber. However, this recent case has exposed how truly twisted the celebrity elites truly are. The investigation began initially in November 2023 by Sean's ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Cassie Ventura. She accused him of misconduct and filed a lawsuit. Cassandra and P. Diddy then settled out of court the very next day, and one of his lawyers, Ben Brathman, was clear that it was by no means an admission of wrongdoing. P. Diddy then released a statement wishing Cassandra the best in order to further support the idea that he was innocent, but guilty or not, it certainly left a stain on his name. Cassandra then released a statement thanking her friends and family for their support, and the settlement amount was left undisclosed. It seemed to be a case closed, done and dusted job. Or at least that's what he thought. Little did P. Diddy know that this would be the beginning of the end for him, and would start the ball rolling with many accusations and investigations that would lead to his demise. A further two lawsuits were then filed, with accusations of abuse by two other women. Joy Dickerson claimed that in 1991, when she was just a 19-year-old college student, P. Diddy had drugged her after a date and sent her Drug in Jesus. her home. Lizard Gardner was the next victim to come forward, claiming she and a friend were drugged and put in separate rooms where at first, P. Diddy and then Aaron Hall would do awful against them. She then found out her friend had the exact same treatment as well, as it seems like they both took turns doing these awful crimes against these girls. Lizard was just 16 at the time, and then a few days later, P. Diddy pitched up at her house and this time choking her until she passed out, as he was irritated at the thought that Lizard might mention this to his girlfriend. Then in December 2023, another person came forward with more accusations aimed at him. She claimed that she, she said that Harvey Pierre, who was the president of Combs Bad Boy Records, flew her from Detroit to New York in 2023. However, while with them, a third man joined P. Diddy and Pierre. P. Diddy even complained that he couldn't finish until he had his nipples pinched. The suit included a photograph from the night in question of her sitting on Sheen's lap. She was only 17 then, and was now the fourth woman to come forward in just a matter of weeks. This time P. Diddy did not well, he's settle out of court. In fact, he issued a statement on his Instagram saying, quote, enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation, and my legacy. He's saying it's all parts. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. I did not do any of these awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. But there were several red flags hinted by friends of P. Diddy, particularly in Usher's interview with Howard Stern, where subtle suggestions indicate that these new allegations were possibly founded as far back as 2016, back when the interview took place. As Usher described his experiences when he lived with Sheen Kuhn for a year, and said he was exposed to some very curious things. But at that age, he didn't understand it. I moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. We're sending New you over York to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. <laughs> to learn Flavor some. Camp. Yeah, Flavor Camp. Yeah, that's camp. what it was called. Puffy's place was like just filled with chicks, like nonstop, right? No, not really. I Come mean, on. but did I, hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. I don't know if I could indulge and understand okay. what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. What I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh huh. And I didn't necessarily understand uh. it. It's only now that it stands out because it further supports the allegation. When Howard asked Usher if he would allow his own son to participate in the puffy flavor camp, as P. Diddy would call it, Usher didn't hesitate to say no. 
18 years old. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to puffy camp? <laughs> Hell <laughs> no. <laughs> in a Rolling Stone interview with Usher in 2004, he elaborated on his experiences with living with P. Diddy. He said there was always girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it with several people in a room having an orgy. You never knew what was going to happen. With this in mind, it wasn't that surprising that by February 27th, 2024, the producer of P. Diddy's album, The Love Album, sued P. Diddy for $30 million for sex. He claimed that he was also drugged and woke up in a bed with two male sex workers and Mr. P. Diddy himself. His lawsuit included P. Diddy's son, Justin, who he claimed would bring underage girls well, home and then drug them, while his dad secretly filmed these sexual acts. Although an adult film actor called D'Angelo Knockout Marquise claimed that one of the photos used in the lawsuit was actually a still from one of his films. Although perhaps discredited, where there's smoke, there's fire, and P. Diddy was now desperately trying to put the fires out as more and more took to flame. P. Diddy actually admits that he did document everything in his life, so any sexual male acts could have easily been caught on tape. And the fear of that exposure will keep some from coming forward as well. Gene Deal, P. Diddy's former bodyguard, said in an interview oh, just pimp all this that the freak off included P. Diddy having sex with male escorts that his then girlfriend was forced to find. Looking at this lawsuit, she alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll make her look online for BBCs for their freak off sessions. And she say that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. And she was searching for the big black not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the room with her. They had to be for both of them they was in the room. P. Diddy would make them wear masks to keep their identity from Casey. She also alleges that, you know, while she was having sex with these male prostitutes, her, the male prostitutes, and Diddy, they all wore masquerade masks. He didn't want her to know who they were. Which is why on March 25th, 2024, P. Diddy's homes in both LA and Miami were raided by the Department of Homeland Security Investigations in New York. The raid was part of the investigation of led by the Southern District of New York. Perhaps prompted by the now five victims who had come forward, one of which was a male who also chose to remain anonymous. Because of this, the investigator seized guns and P. Diddy's phone on the day of the raid. It was reported that over 1,000 bottles of baby oil and lubricants were found on the property. Okay. This unusual find would be laughable if it weren't so incriminating to the horrific charges. It only supported flying rumors of sex parties that would go on for days with and male escorts, all performing sexual acts in the quote freak off to satisfy P. Diddy's endless need for lust. In the Los Angeles home, P. Diddy's sons were also put in handcuffs during the raid. It was reported by their mother that the federal agents used excessive, unnecessary force and that it was just racially motivated. But it couldn't be any further from the truth. What? Everyone allegedly involved was being taken down. And over the coming months, the truth, to this. the truth would unravel about how truly disturbing the this Hollywood celebrity culture truly was. Now, P. Diddy these parties are known to be insane, as you can probably tell by the 1,000 bottles of baby oil. At these parties, it was reported that the drugs offered were all designed so that party participants could go on for hours having sex. There was a drink called the Tusi, which was dosed with a bunch of drugs. Jaguar Wright explained this in an interview, as she said that P. Diddy would put in Special K, also known as ketamine, to relax your muscles. Now, if you don't know what ketamine is, ketamine is what they call on the street Special K. It's a veterinary drug, it's a horse tranquilizer. This was then mixed with and Viagra to counteract the negative side effect of limp noodle, as Jaguar described it, creating the perfect mix to relax you while still keeping you completely energized for sex. The can keep you up all night, but unfortunately it gives you limp noodle because of with the blood flow to side effects. So the, you want to fuck with a half hard dick all night. So that's why you have the Viagra to make sure that the, the dick involuntarily stays hard while you're numbing your fucking self with the coat. Jamie Foxx even said that he'd been to one of these parties and it's very likely that most people in the celebrity LA Hollywood culture would be partaking in this stuff, especially with the recent allegations coming forward in the last couple of weeks. And it's truly disturbing to think what was happening there. Recently, a video was shown by CNN of P. Diddy and Casey, which further supported her claims. The video shows her trying to leave the hotel party and P. Diddy had already given her a black eye by this point. In the video, P. Diddy's wearing nothing but a towel and as he catches up to her, he violently actually a cycle. pushes her down, then proceeds to kick her twice and tries to drag her down the hall. The footage shows when he throws a bunch of glass in her direction. It's obvious that he's very intoxicated at the time, having just emerged from one of these awful parties. After this footage went public, P. Diddy posted an apology saying he was disgusted with himself when it happened and that he's disgusted with himself now. 
It's so difficult nah, to reflect on the darkest times in your life. Sometimes you gotta do that. I was f***ed up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm, I'm disgusted now. He claimed that he sought help and went to rehab after the incident. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry, but I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. The LA County District Attorney's Office also issued a statement saying that while the video was hard to watch, they could not use it for further action as the footage and incident happened beyond the timeline where it would be of legal use. However, they encouraged others to come forward. It was explained that P. Diddy paid the hotel $50,000 for the footage so that it would not be leaked to the public. The sad reality is that this is the only incident caught in surveillance and actually exposed to the public. However, Casey's lawsuit was riddled with far more horrific accusations. That girl went through some tumultual sh that she never thought that she would ever have to go through being in the music business. She claimed that P. Diddy would go into fits of rage and that she was his main target of savage beatings. They went into the bedroom and shut the door and all I could hear is screaming and yelling and whatever was going on in there, I don't know. But all I could think of was um, to grab Cassie's things and start packing it up and just getting her out to safety. She claimed that he would with other men while he watched, filmed, and masturbated to it. This has since been dubbed as a freak off, and as we've mentioned, it's come up in many, many other accusations as well. She also claimed to try to leave him in 2018, which ended up with her getting odd. Casey also claimed that for a brief time, she and Kid Cudi started a romantic relationship, but when P. Diddy found out about it, he threatened to set his car on fire and wanted to make sure that Kid Cudi was there when it happened. While it seemed like an idle threat, it did indeed happen. Two weeks later, Kid Cudi's car was deliberately set alight. As for P. Diddy, this footage of the abuse could not have come at a worse time. He was already being investigated, adding fuel to the fire. Women were coming forward with further accusations, and even men like the Michigan inmate Derek Lee Smith sued P. Diddy for 100 million and won by default. It seemed that P. Diddy didn't even show up to defend himself for this one. In Derek's suit, he claimed that while at a party in Detroit in 1997, he was a million. victim of by P. Diddy. And once these accusations started coming forward, people started realizing that P. Diddy was just the tip of a giant iceberg of a huge Hollywood conspiracy. You see, Eminem, who's known to rap out his opinions, recently dropped a line in his Killshot diss track, mainly aimed at Machine Gun Kelly that brought up the possibility of P. Diddy's involvement in Tupac's murder. The line that had fans reeling went, Kel was the day you put out hits, the day Diddy admits that he put the hits out that got Tupac killed, which was then followed by, I'm just playing Diddy, you know I love you, and many share Eminem's suspicions, although there has been no real proof of it. It is possible that Eminem is not holding back as P. Diddy's record company Bad Boy Records is funding MGK who was gunning for Eminem. But Eminem didn't stop there. In other songs like Antichrist, he brings up the video of P. Diddy and Casey and makes fun of possible reasons for P. Diddy to chase Casey. In another song, Fuel, he brings up the lawsuit and insinuates that P. Diddy tried to have Tupac's alleged murderer killed. In another song, Bad One, Eminem raps about P. Diddy possibly blowing up Kid Cudi's car. It hit such a nerve that P. Diddy demanded a public apology from Eminem. He believed that the rapper had gone way too far and was doing more damage to his reputation in light of the new developments. Well, he's not wrong because <laughs> Eminem's fan base outnumbers any other rapper, and they tend to be loyal and hang on to their every word. Especially when it comes to the disturbing life behind the scenes in the music industry and Hollywood world, people trust that Eminem isn't just making this up. All these allegations seem to stem from a time when P. Diddy came off as a powerful icon in the industry. This speaks to the intimidation and manipulations used to keep all those people quiet. In 1999, certain testimonies indicate that P. Diddy got away with a shootout in a club. At the same time, P. Diddy and his then-girlfriend, J. Lo, went to the club and got into an altercation with Matthew Scar Allen. P. Diddy knocked a drink out of Matthew's hand which sparked the violence, where P. Diddy threw money in his face as a sign of disrespect. As it got heated, both of them drew their guns and fired into the crowd. Three victims survived to tell the tale, but one victim in particular stands out. Natania Rubin reports that she saw P. Diddy do the shooting while Sheen shot into the ceiling. She herself was shot in the face, and her testimony has not wavered since. I watched them both fire their guns. I watched them, and that is exactly how I sit here today, because some thug criminal with an attitude and an ego that was outside of control 
decided he was going to fire a gun in a crowded nightclub and shot me in my face. She was so adamant about it that she offered to get bullet fragments removed from her skull to use as forensic evidence. However, P. Diddy was once again acquitted, with Shane taking the fall, being sentenced to 10 years in prison. Pulling the strings behind the scenes once again, and P. Diddy got away scot free. just got away a bit angry. Free. This was even brought up in Rodney's suit, as P. Diddy would tell him that he even got away with shooting people and would display his guns to instill fear to keep Rodney silent and compliant. The more we uncover about P. Diddy's life, the more these testimonies start to line up a very dark picture of what it takes to actually succeed in the celebrity culture, and how truly powerful the people pulling the strings really are. P. Diddy just seems to be the tip of the iceberg, just one guy who was so clumsy, made so many obvious mistakes, and became so hated by the industry that he's finally now being exposed. But who knows how many other people are out there doing the exact same thing or even worse. But soon another two victims would come forward, this time the model Crystal McKinney, who claimed she met P. Diddy in 2003 at a fashion event. He found her attractive and offered to help her with her career, and once he had her at his studio, he gave her alcohol and offered her laced marijuana, stating, you've never had weed like this before. Quickly, she was very intoxicated, and P. Diddy took her into her bathroom and forced her to perform some certain acts. Later on, she woke up in a cab, but luckily remembered what had happened and she kept her clothes in plastic if they were ever needed for forensics. But because of his power, she only filed the lawsuit in May of 2024. April Lamprose is another victim of a much older but longer case. In 1994, she would meet P. Diddy, as he offered to mentor her in pursuing a fashion career. However, this would turn into a lawsuit of four incidents where P. Diddy over the next six or seven years. If she refused his advances, he would go berserk, which almost made her feel obliged. P. Diddy then taped it all without her knowledge and had shown these clips to others. She felt like he had the power to ruin her career in an instant, so she always had to be careful. After a few years, she bumped into him again. This time he apologized for his behavior, but then fell straight back into his old tricks to lure her in. The indictment revealed that P. Diddy also threatened his victims, including by threatening to expose the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of free coughs, if the woman didn't comply with his demands. Kidnapping, also one of the charges, was briefly mentioned in a joking manner in a Conan interview with P. Diddy, where he says, quote, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They just, you know, so if you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. You need locks on the doors. And while the crowd laughs at the time, it's only in hindsight do we realize how disturbing the statement truly was. I don't know if guys have noticed this, like a lot of ladies drink water at parties. They right. just, you know, so you have, if you don't have what they need, they're gonna leave. Right. Gotta right. keep them there. Right. You need, you need locks on the doors. <laughs> Which is why last week on September 16th, 2024, P. Diddy was finally arrested at a hotel in Manhattan on charges of racketeering conspiracy and transportation to engage in prostitution. His lawyers claimed he intended to hand himself in, but wasn't awarded the chance. He also claimed that he had handed over his passport, but it was cleverly worded as he had only handed it over to his lawyer, not the federal government. The reason this is important is because he was trying to show that he was not a flight risk and therefore able to be released on bail. If P. Diddy did try to leave the country, it would turn into a nightmare of trying to get him back. However, his lawyer would have discouraged this. Still, it didn't matter because the judge denied his bail. His lawyer then appealed bail on the 18th of September, offering $50 million, which was again denied. And P. Diddy is now facing up to life in prison should he be convicted of the long list of charges, including forced labor, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. P. Diddy and his team tried to silence many witnesses with bribes, but while his life went from expensive cars and parties with some of the most rich and famous pop stars in mansions and hotels, he's now confined to four walls of a prison cell, waking people up to how disturbing this Hollywood industry truly is. It's also known that the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, where he's currently being detained, is known to be hell on earth. It's the same prison that housed R. Kelly, who faced very similar charges, and Mr. Jeffrey was also a former inmate before uh -oh. he was found. Since the second appeal of bail was denied, P. Diddy has been put on an S watch. His lawyers have said that they will fight this with all they have, as they believe he's innocent. But it's believed that the defense attorneys have an airtight case. And he still he's innocent, very confident that their investigation findings will secure a guilty verdict. Regardless of the outcome, his career is completely over. He's been exposed for all the vile stuff, and now the truth just seems to keep on unraveling. All his business colleagues and former friends have done everything they can to distance themselves from him. It appears that Usher's deleted a bunch of tweets to get some distance. And even though he claims he didn't do this, it does seem very suspicious and nobody really believes him. But many celebrities are too scared to even speak out against P. Diddy. And some might fear the footage the feds have that could implicate them. It's been reported that Justin Bieber is so shocked by the crimes of P. Diddy that he's unwilling to talk about it. And after all the videos of him and Justin Bieber have surfaced back online, it's said that Justin's completely shut down. 
and you can only imagine some awful things have happened behind the scenes that mm -hmm. we'll never truly know about. Justin, who once looked up to and admired the music mogul, now regrets collaborating with P. Diddy on his latest album, and there's probably way more to it than just that. More information has also been leaked about how P. Diddy funded Bad Boy Records by drugging his guests with food and drinks and then filming orgies to blackmail the elite's high-profile guests. Castle Black made the there? claim and said he had been waiting to come out with the truth about his knowledge of the matter. This actually cooked up. But no matter what, this entire scandal should really highlight how disturbing the celebrity world really is, how there's power brokers pulling strings behind the scenes, controlling everyone in the industry. And if you don't fall in line, you can easily be blackmailed, which makes it so that it's almost impossible to know what's really going on. But with more clues like this, people are starting to wake up to how truly awful the celebrity industry truly is. Okay, because they were telling them. 